Welcome back, YouTube. All right, so we finished our two scrolls. We got them equipped, we're pretty well geared. Nobody has any armor yet, which is kind of weird that we haven't gotten any of those drops. But uh, I'll work on crafting some of those later. I think the next thing I'm gonna craft is actually a great sword. There's a very specific recipe that I like, and that's obsidian and ruby. And um, if you saw my other YouTube video, then you would know why. But I have a bunch of obsidian from that uh, event that we triggered three times, and I have a little bit of ruby too, but we gotta get a little bit more. We gotta mine just one more stack. And we know already where there is a ruby deposit. So I don't need to research these now, but I will. Just so I don't forget later. All right, let's get moving. How many food types do we have now? Very nice. We have more than 10. We're gonna get all the morale bonuses. And I forgot to mention before, the Lightbringer spawns, these nests are different than other nests because even though it shows difficulty two, if you actually go in there, it's like a difficulty seven spiritual or mental fight. And um, like some people think that's really weird, but I think it's fine. The creatures that they spawn are like level one and level two. So they're not hard to deal with. It's just really hard to get rid of the spawn. And I think that that plays very well with the feel that's, that Thea's supposed to give you, right? Like it's, it's, it's a storyline, basically. The Lightbringers are trying to take over. All right, so we're gonna go west to this piece of ruby that we found earlier. And I'll actually clear out this rat's nest on the way. I, don't, I probably don't need to reveal all these last few bits of the Fog of War. And we ought to resolve. No, we can't. There's a lot of rats here, but they're all probably pretty weak. Here's what I'm going to do. Let's play out some AoE. We've got two people with some good AoE now. So I'll play them out in the back row. Check out how the scavenger's damage is going to go up through the roof. I'm going to put my greatsword attack because that's this small narrow field is perfect for splash damage. The enemy can take advantage of it too though, so be careful, but these enemies are just little rats. And I guess you can go down here as well. Why not? Alright. And I'm going to put out two skeletons. I think pretty good. My estimate was Almost correct. Alright, I can't play anything else. So let's end the turn. Boom, huge damage. Alright. And now we're attacking their hand because they have nothing else else left on the board. All right, the nest is cleared and so you should have some peace for now. We got a scaled codex that looks incredibly strong, but that's only because of the, uh, the bug with the essence. Hammer club. In short, the same codex that's made out of the same materials, once those numbers are fixed, will only fill up like two bars instead of three and a half. But anyway, for now, I don't use codexes at all. I won't use them for this playthrough. Let's keep on moving. All right. We got right to the edge of this ruby, so we can start getting it. It's gonna take us three turns. Nobody has any tools. Well, you guys already have some tools equipped. And it was Camille and the Hunter. And the others? Can you guys actually craft some tools, maybe? I don't really have enough stuff to use. Oh, I have Amber. I have a ton of Amber. Let's craft that. So you can choose different types of stats to go for. And that works for tools, but also any other equipment. Like great swords, for example. 
you can choose the uh, any weapon has these options weapon elemental weapon and legendary weapon but for tools more like this you want straight up gathering for gathering tools or you want the hybrid for gathering and crafting or you want perception and gathering and then for crafting tools it's straight up crafting hybrid or wisdom in crafting so it's nice to have those stat boosts because then you can stick it on a child and uh remember we get that same bonus for them having better options for uh growing up into better classes but i think i want to make one of these with perception then we'll give it to the hunter and he'll take advantage of that boost so that's going to take four turns so even though the ruby is only going to take three turns Let's stay here for four turns. And I'm gonna go ahead and queue up this great sword. Uh, looks like we only needed 18 to get this uh, obsidian great sword. We can actually make two of them. All right, let's end a few turns. We'll make this go faster. Got a nice level up. Okay, so Blunt Attack or Dizziness Powder for our Zerka. I think that Dizziness Powder is usually better. Or is it? Blunt leveling up blunt, blunt Attack might be good for the conceptual challenges where you can't use weapons. Let me check if he has something else that's already better. He just has Battle Orders and Inspire, which are not actually damaging attacks. So yeah, let's level up Blunt Attack. End the turn one more time. Okay, so we got this tools. So that's going to be better for the Hunter. And he's gathering right now, so it's good that he has the gathering tools. And then the crafting tools. Why don't you hold on to that? We could also... We could also craft another um, tools, but a crafting tools this time. And we'll do this one. So we get the plus wisdom boost. So gems are actually just really good for crafting tools because they're the lightest version. It can get really hard to uh, keep your inventory weight in check, so. Having stuff that's uh, that crafts light recipes is really good. All right, two more turns until the ruby. Oh, actually, we already got a stack, so we should be making this great sword right now. I would love to make the the crafting tools, but let's just work on the great sword, I think. Or, if we make the crafting tools in two turns, then maybe it'll actually cut down one turn on the greatsword. Not sure. I do want to continue having Ruby be in mind by these two guys, because I think I want to make another one of those greatswords. Even though only one person can equip it. I don't have a second warrior yet, but I'll just put one in reserve. This guy again. Alright, we know how to deal with him. Uh oh. It was supposed to take us two turns to get this crafting tool, but I guess a blessing must have worn off or something in the last turn. So we didn't actually get it in time. But this warrior can just finish it up. You can start getting some points into the great sword. Yeah, you guys spend two more turns getting that ruby. All right, easy auto resolve there. That's good. That means we can go faster. All right, we finished this crafting tools. So I'll put the crafting tools on the scavenger actually because he's the next best crafter and he also benefits from the wisdom because he's got that weakness skill remember so then we'll put this hybrid tool on the warrior 
just for him to do something. Alright, best crafters onto the obsidian great sword. It's gonna take six turns. I guess I still want to get a little bit of ruby. I just need one turn to get another stack. You accidentally step onto a bee's nest as you try to run. You see a cave you could run into. It's not deal with the bees. You take cover in the cave, but you soon realize you're not alone. There's a wounded bear trapped by some rocks. It looks at you pleadingly. I'm not sure what it's pleading for. Like, I'm not sure if they're going for we're trying to end its misery or if we're supposed to like leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it alone. We get some mushrooms and some bone. We find that in the cave. All right. So I don't need any more ruby. Although actually I could be using ruby to make better tools too. But I might make another one of these great swords. And what can these two guys do? Probably cook something at this point. I'm going to lay out all my recipes to see what I'm low on. Well, not any of these stuff. meats. We have enough for one. We make sandwich. All right, you guys can make some more sandwiches. Three more turns. We can't uh, work on the second great sword even if we wanted to right now because um, we're running a lot on wood. Although, to be honest, I don't really mind burning dark wood and elven wood either. Maybe we could just stay. Alright, three turns to finish the first one. And the other guys... Keep cooking foods. This pickles. And... Let's cook these sandwiches. I feel like I don't really need much more cooking. Uh, we're so super close to getting the great sword. We want to get something else crafted. I might as well craft another tools, right? Maybe this time it won't be the perception ones. I'll just craft one with a little bit more base gathering. Oh, I don't have enough. I don't have enough amber for that. Can I use amber in something else? Have six for leather. We could also use regular leather. I think I'm going to save the leather though for um, a ship. Probably going to use wood and leather for a ship. And in that case, I'll use the six for leather. Let's use the scaled actually because it's a little bit lighter, even though it's only two. Uh, Two pound difference. I'm almost there, so even this guy will just finish up. I guess we can cook one more thing. I have 104 of those, so probably not this one. Mm, yeah, let's cook these pickles. Cool. Alright, so huge upgrade here. This Obsidian Greatsword, it has a 1.8 damage multiplier now instead of 1.4. It's also got poison, which means that if the enemy is already damaged, then you do 1.5 times damage. And it also has shield leech, which means that all the damage you do uh, leeches 30% of that, that damage back as shielding for you. It's really good. 
And on the passive is 7.2 shielding for all colors. As you can see, now he's got some shielding for all the challenges. So even though in the conceptual challenges, you cannot use the weapon skills, the passives do work. So he can tank better in the conceptual ones as well. Excellent. All right, some of this now is just trash, so we can uh, maybe trade it over to one of these villages. We don't have we don't have to create the other great sword now because we don't have anybody to equip it on. But we already have those uh, materials on hand if we want to. Let's go curve back and actually hit up these two these two uh, nests. We'll get some good research points that way. And we'll do this option. All right, let's actually end the turn here. So we're next to the meat. Most efficient way of moving. There, we can gather some meat on the way. All right, so now let's clear off this nest. That's fine. That's supposed to be a very little damage, but our warrior actually took half his health. It's okay though, we'll heal it over time. We get a dark club, an amber mallet, a bunch of bones and meat and stuff. We're getting close to the village, so we'll probably trade it away. We can actually trade with both of these villages. These are two separate villages, although I think they count as the same faction. Let's do this. Let's go to the tavern. Ah! Guys, I told you. I told you last time. You got so drunk you don't recall much of what happened, but a stork visits you sometime later. Nine months later, maybe? And now we have Ustka. Good question mark. Alright, so new member of our party here. She is a female. She's probably going to be triggering uh, stork events with any or multiple of these males. We're getting uh, storks and cabbage patches, you know? They're not they're not doing anything besides that. Don't let your imagination run too wild. There's Blunt Attack, Chop going up in 31 turns, and Craftsman. Cool, sounds good. Let's give her this scroll so she has something to do. Let's give her this boar so her movement points go up a little bit. A little bit more in line with everybody else's. This jewelry, probably don't need, because you're not going to be on the field. I think you're good. All right. I was actually thinking that we were going to just get some extra alcoholic food. So that's good too. I could have used that one point to go interact with the village again, but I wanted to end my turn next to these vegetables, so we're stocking up. Alright, another level up. So, Laszlo the Warrior. You could increase your toughness passive to level 2, which is good, but the parry passive is also very good. Adds extra shielding. Shielding is usually better than just HP, so I think we're going to take that. This got nerfed pretty heavily. I think it used to be like 633 or 533 instead of 311. But yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh. Alright, Hunter's Mark going up to level 3. The multiplier is now 2.8. That's pretty insane. And then Camille. Weakness also. Insane for the same reasons. Multiplier going up. Very strong. All right, let's uncamp, go back here. We're going to, well, first of all, see if they want us to kill anything. Yeah, nasty bunch of, nasty bunch of scoundrels are setting up nearby. We're small and we're worried they may hit us soon, but if you got them first, sure, I'll do it for you. They're not even that far away. And then we can trade with them as well. Is there anything that we even need? I honestly don't think so. I might just take herbs. Herbs are good for cooking, but also for doing the faith restoring rituals.
I don't need this scroll anymore, because I have better scrolls now. Maybe I'll just take their meat. Seems kind of expensive, but I feel like we have a lot of stuff we want to get rid of. This is just overburdening us. We don't need any of this stuff. Mm, we're almost there, 601 versus 618. I think we start getting rid of maybe blood bones. I might want to keep these monster bones. I think that I might want to craft an armor out of them. Is there anything better for me to get rid of? Might not need the scaled leather either. I don't know. I'll get rid of the uh, the blood bones though. And then two amber because they're worth less. All right, good trade. I don't think there was anything else left to do there. Let me go down here and interact with this village, maybe, just for some more trading. I might not need to. Let's go uh, take out these guys first. Let's camp because we are injured. Alright, so you find a place where you were sent to deal with some folk attacking the Slavians. Apparently we also dabbled in Ruffianism. So we can speak to them. We can offer them some goods for leaving, or we will just destroy them. With an auto-resolve. We get a bunch of food. Really nice. Another useless wand that we can trade away. And then... You don't have to turn it into quest. When you've done it, you've done it. But I'm not going to do too many of those because, again, the faction reputation screen is not available, so I don't know my, my progress. Go down here. I'm going to make my way over to the leather here, actually, because I want to get enough leather to craft the ship out of. Don't worry, it's not just leather. It's actually going to be crafted out of wood and leather. Okay, we're almost out of Roladas. Let's get a bunch of those. Cool. Back on a bunch more food. You can see that we have 113 turns of food. Only 20 turns worth of fuel though. So we gotta make sure that we don't run out of that. All right, so these guys, I don't think we're cursed or anything or not really injured anymore. Go to the tavern again, more drinks, get some of these uh, alcoholic beverages. This guy's sick for four turns, not too big a deal. All right, let's see what they have for trade. I'll do the same thing, I'm just gonna take their um, herbs and food. There's nothing else very appealing. Or is there? Actually, nobody's equipping any armor. <laughs> so considering that uh, everyone's kind of walking around naked, why don't we see if we can get some armor? Although I gave up all that stuff already, so I might not have enough. Ah, I have the skilled codex. I forgot about that, that I can trade. It's actually worth more. Maybe I can get two things. I don't really want the sandstone heavy armor, even though it has more shields. It's ridiculously heavy. Maybe I'll add some herbs to the mix. And then I can get some blood bones. If I get 15 blood bones, it's too much. 13. Yeah, perfect. Cool. So let's equip this armor. We're going to put it on our warrior, because he's the one that's going to be standing out front. Now, all of a sudden, we are looking pretty good. Warriors, decently geared. Hunter doesn't need a weapon. He's got good skills. Child can summon some 1 HP skeletons. And we got some nice scrolls on our mage and our uh, summoner. So, we're going to make our way to our next objective point. 
which I've deemed to be this leather. Move efficiently. Gathering some vegetables on the way. I probably should be cooking every turn as well. But I'm trying to go a little bit faster. Let's see, just scanning around. I do want to destroy this rats and boar slayer because we're going to get some research points from that. But also, we're going in this direction. Because we're going to go to this island. Beautiful looking island. So let's actually gather here, right? So we can gather leather and some uh, vegetables at the same time. All right. So we get a warm meal and are invited to listen to folk tales from the old Baba. Children ask you many questions about the wider world and you are somewhat relieved when it's time to sleep. Woken by a distant tremor, you rise from the gravel and dust that surrounds you. Mere steps away from you, the deep gash that swallowed the farmhouse that gave you a refuge the night before. So sad. So we got a bunch of blessings now. Let's do the nice thing and look for survivors. We might not get anything, but we end up running into the family again, but they turn into light zombies. So let's... I'm not sure if it makes a difference which one I choose. Let's observe their movements. An oppressive emanation of light and order pushes against your very being. And this light seeks to stifle any magic or darkness, and the order seeks to diminish all turmoil. Your bones twist and your blood boils from the assault. Let's battle these fiends. We'll do it manually, but it shouldn't be a problem. So our spells are just as effective in um, these spiritual battles as they were in the uh, physical ones. So we'll put them out first. And then we're going to summon some skeletons. Now the skeletons are not going to be as powerful. Right, see how weak they are? Because their stats are much lower in the uh, spiritual challenges. But each, each skeleton does trigger Strength of the Swarm. So if, by summoning two skeletons, you're triggering Strength of the Swarm twice on the scavenger. So I have more skeletons. Let's summon some skeletons with her. And what else? What else do I even want to do? Maybe I'll just play out a soul tear. Just for more damage. So the one enemy that had three clones of itself out took triple damage because each one of them got hit by the same attack. Alright. We defeat him. And Laszlo gets a plus 1.3 permanent destiny boost. Unfortunately that's not really useful for the warrior. But can't complain about free stats. Alright, so we can sit here, we're gonna gather leather. And just to check, we can check our recipe. We need 75 leather and 55 wood. So we're gonna have to get a bunch of wood too. We only have two regular wood, but I guess I'll just burn some dark wood and elven wood in the meantime. Don't really care too much about them. So you guys get leather, you guys get vegetables. Somebody else can cook. So I'm going to end some turns in quick succession. Let us um, help the stork. Get some more boosts. Very nice. We got another dog. Very cool. Nobody else really needs this perception boost, but if somebody is not equipping a pet, they can get a sanity boost. The mental HP, which is never bad. And you're gonna cook a little bit more grilled meat.
Alright, the tickle fight guy again. We have a child again, a new child. Let's just do the tickle fight. She gains a permanent plus one strength from it. That must have been a really, really, uh, really intense tickle fight. But she's much stronger for it now. She levels up. And she gets plus two mysticism as an option. So females, if they have four mysticism, have the option to become a witch. So let's go for that. It's very strong. She still might not get it. I think it's only a chance. Zemoslav, Arzerka, we definitely want to give you more intelligence that'll make your uh, unliving stronger that you summon. And how much leather are we at? 62. So, what else do you want to cook? Pickles? This thing again, we're gonna ignore the bear. I would feel too bad killing the bear. Pickle fight again. Do it again. Uh, so, I guess that we failed the tickle fight. <laughs> this time we just got sick. Oh well. Only for two turns. Alright, so do we have the 75 leather? We do have the 75 leather. So now we're going to need to move somewhere else and get wood. We're already out of regular wood, but we're going to need 55 in order to build our ship. And since we know that the island we want to go to is down this direction, let's go to the wood uh, down over here. There we go. Get two stacks of wood. Guess you guys can cook. The ground beneath your feet collapses and you fall into a tunnel. You soon realize the floor seems to be moving. It's swarming with the vermin. It is odd that they're not attacking me. Let's observe them. The rats seem single-mindedly obsessed with carrying objects deeper into the tunnel. Things like branches, stones, pieces of bodies, bones, and equipment. You also may have spotted a person being carried away by the swarm. Very interesting. Some of the rats begin tugging at your feet as if to carry you too, but for now they judge it too hard of a task. Let's follow them. Farther into the tunnel, you see an obese rat slumped on a throne made of rat droppings. Hmm. It was like a king rat. I guess we have to attack. That's the only option it gives us. So we, we win. The rat nest is mostly a pile of dung and debris, but you may be able to salvage some goods. Alright, we just get some mushrooms. And let's actually take out this rat's nest, because we want to do that for the EXP and the uh, research points. Right. Can't auto-resolve this one. But I'll probably just uh, auto-resolve it for YouTube. Alright, easy battle. We get a bunch more bones and stuff. And we're going to end our turn here, because we still need wood. Get all that wood, other people can get fruit. And the last person might as well make her useful and get some more pickles. Maybe we have enough movements to go hit the boar's lair and come back. Alright, so the boar's lair looks like we can just auto resolve it. Nice. That's more meat. We can head back here. Some very efficient movements here. Alright, so let me check how far we are from building this ship. We need 55 wood and 75 leather, so just a couple more turns. Mm, let's just make it go quick and stay in place. Let's actually just queue up some more pickles. Two more quick turns. Now, is this enough? 
Yes. Let's start crafting this ship. For some reason it's a building. I guess it's like a building. All right. So this is the lightest, worst ship. All right, you can't make it with less materials because then you don't have enough essence to make even the first bar, and that just means you can't click the confirm button. But wood and uh, leather as a secondary is the lightest version. If you make it out of all wood, then you actually need 145 wood, and it's 500 pounds. So I like doing it this way. And it is going to take us probably like eight turns, six turns actually. That's not too bad. Since we're using all our wood, let's make sure that somebody's getting wood. And instead of making pickles, you can go gather some fruit. Alright, now you can go back to fruit as well. Or... You two, get a bunch of fruit. Let's throw some torches, because that's a sensible thing to do. We will outsmart the vipers and auto-resolve it. Just for speed. Wow, we just got another 30 wood and 20 leather. We got that a couple turns ago, that would've been nice. All right, so our child can learn uh, level two blunt attack or business powder. We don't know what class he's gonna be, so business powder is pretty good. Gives us some tactical options. Let us end, what, one or two more turns? All right, so I think we talked to it and it's gonna, oh, it doesn't give us the option this time for cleaning the house. But convinced that its master is long gone. You don't have to guard this house anymore, bro. And we got vegetables, but Laszlo got cursed. Thing is, I don't really even care enough to uncurse this guy because a warrior with a spiritual curse uh, doesn't really matter. But the witch hut event triggered. The witch hut can trigger randomly if you have a cursed party member and they'll uh, actually heal your curse, so why not, right? We're lucky that it just happened to trigger here. This is another one of those trays where everything's worth one. We'll just use bone. We have exactly 40 bone. How convenient. And it costs 40. So we'll remove your spirit curse. And there we go, guys. We have our ship. Let's double check. We have all our provisions. We have a bunch of food types. Food for 182 turns. We have a bunch of different wood. Enough for 67 turns of fuel. We have decent equipment on everybody. Child grows up in 10 turns. And yeah, let's set sail. We're gonna go here to this island. But with that, we'll end this episode of the YouTube Let's Play. Hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one, guys.